All right, welcome. Uh, in this video, I want to just practice uh, adding and removing from a minimum heap. Uh, and to do that, I'm going to make use of my list of random numbers here that I generated in a previous video. Um, this list of random numbers I'm just going to add uh, into a minimum heap uh, in the order that we encounter them. Uh, so let's begin. Now remember, when adding into a heap, we add elements in uh, in positions in order in a uh, fully or a completely left loaded uh, binary tree. So the first element, uh, maybe not surprisingly, uh, goes in the root. Um, and so there's with a heap of size one, there's no invariant to violate. Um, so we're good here. So next element is four, and we know that when we add 4, again, there's only one location for us to add it, that's right here. Um, and of course, now we do we have violated the invariant, with, we're going to be building a min heap here. Uh, the parents are supposed to be less than the child, and this is of course in incorrect. Um, so, we would do a bubble up operation, uh, rendering us in this state, uh, when, when we're done that first add. Alright, so this is uh, the state of our heap after this add. Now we can go ahead and make the 21. The 21 is going to be added in this position. Again, we'll check our invariant. 4 is less than 21, so we're good. We can move on to the next add. Uh, in this position, we're going to have a 25. Again, it goes here. And we check our, our value versus our parent. This is the proper relationship, so we're good. Moving on to 15. Again. 15 is greater than 11, so we satisfy our invariant here. So far, we've had pretty much free adds. Uh, now we get to this point here, we do have a variant, an invariant violation. Our 14 is less than our 21, so we need to uh, perform a swap operation here. And after that swap, uh, our 14 has settled into the proper location as it is still greater than the 4, so it doesn't need to shuffle up any further. Alright, this next add is going to be an interesting one because one will be the minimum element uh, in our heap. So when we add it down here, of course, we're violating our invariant. Um, so, so we do need to do a swap operation here. So we swap the one uh, with the 14. Uh, and now we need to swap the one with the 4 as well. All right, the one has bubbled its way all the way to the top. That's as high, as high as it can go, so we must be must be complete. All right, so now we'll try to add the nine, and we'll see here again the nine uh, invalidates our by our invariant, so we do need to do a swap here. After swapping the nine and the twenty-five, uh, we notice we uh, have another swap we need to do. The nine and the eleven are still out of order. So we swap them, and the 9 settles uh, in this position here. Uh, it is less than the 1, uh, so we're good. Let's continue now with our 20. Uh, adding our 20 into this location here uh, requires no adjustment. Uh, 20 is greater than 11, so we're good. Uh, this 2 is small. We, we're probably going to expect it to float up or bubble up. Uh, indeed, adding the 2 here, it's out of order with our 15, so we need to correct these. Uh, so after this swap, uh, the 2 has bubbled up, but we can see that, yes, it's out of order with the 9 as well. So we will do another swap. Uh, but now that we've arrived here, again, 2 is less than 1, or so 2 is greater than 1, uh, so we have settled into our position here. Uh, adding in our 17 now. Looks like we had space there, and it doesn't violate our invariant. How about our 26? Uh, left child of the 21, but yes. Uh, it's correct location there. Uh, what about our 13? 13 looks like it violates the invariant as well. Uh, so we're going to have to do a swap of our 21 and our 13. But now our 13 uh, is greater than our 4, so it's settled into the proper location. Uh, 7, ooh, that's out of order with our 14 too, so let's go ahead and swap them. And then our 24. Our 24 here is in the right order. And then finally our 30. Uh, th I, I've selected 16 elements here, so we've filled up all of the first 15 locations up to depth 3, 
Uh, so now we had to get down to depth 4 to add our 30, uh, but now we've got our heap. And again, our heap, um, uh, since we're running a min heap here, we maintain the minimum element on the top, uh, but we also can see that a lot of the heavier elements, the larger elements, have sunk down to the bottom. Um, and there's a few things, a few properties of heaps that we can verify that the minimum element is always on the top, but the next minimum element has to be one of its children. In this case, the third minimum is the other child, but that's not always guaranteed to be the case. Um, we've practiced doing some add operations here. Let's now practice doing some remove min operations, and that's where we're going to remove the minimum element. So it's always going to be the root element that we want to remove. So let's go ahead and do that by trying to remove the one. Now let's remember the strategy that we take when we remove an element. Uh, we can only remove this 30, technically. That's the, the element that uh, we're allowed to remove from the heap uh, without violating the left loaded complete uh, binary tree property. So our first step is to swap the 1 and the 30, and then we can safely delete the 1. Of course, now our 30 is going to be uh, violating our invariant again, out of order with some of its children. So now we're going to do that sync down operation. And we need to remember that when we sync our element down, our 30 down here, we pick the smaller of its children. Uh, to swap with. So we swapped with the 2. Now notice the 2 is the new minimum and now it's on the top where it belongs. And we're going to continue this until our 30 uh, arrives where it belongs and since 30 is the largest number it's going to sink all the way down to the bottom. Again always swapping it with its smaller child. Okay, so after that sink down operation, the 30's made its way back down to the bottom, uh, but the 2 has floated its way up into the top location. And maybe I'll keep uh, note as we go here. The first element we removed was a 1. I'm now going to remove the 2. So I'm going to remove the 2. Uh, I'm going to have to swap that with this uh, 24 down here. Um, but now I can delete the 2 safely and we'll need to bubble down the 24. So it looks like we'll bubble down here, sink down I guess I should say. We'll sink down one more time. And it looks like we need to sink down one more time. And we can see that 24 is sunk all the way back down to the bottom. It's almost back where it be belongs, or back where it started I should say. Um, and again, the more important thing is the 4, the minimum element, has floated up into its top spot. So now we can go ahead and take out the 4. Well, again, we're going to swap with this 24, it looks like. And now we're going to delete the 4. The 24 needs to sink down now, sinking down to the, 20, to the 7. And we'll sink down again now, swapping with the 13. All right, uh, still not done yet. It's uh, in the right position relative to the 26, but not the 21. So let's swap out with the 21. And now we have our 24 settling into the proper location. Interesting, now that 24 has also sunk its way back down to that next location. So when we do our next remove, remove our 7, once again, we're going to swap with the 24. That 24 is seeing a lot of, a lot of action so far. Okay, we swap with our 7, but remember the purpose of that is to just delete that node. Uh, so now we want to sync down our 24. Uh, let's try it again, 24 with the 11. And then we'll sync one more time. The 24 has to sync with the 20. Okay, the 24 is once again sank all the way to the bottom, but it didn't end up in this, this last location here. So in our next step where we're going to remove the 9, we swap the 9 with the 26. Uh, again, the purpose of that is to delete the 9, so let's delete the 9, and then we'll sink down the 26. Uh, continuing to sink down the 26 with the 15 now, and one more step. Okay, 26 has sank its way to the bottom. We're ready to keep going, remove our 11 now. So our 11, we're going to swap out with our 26. I'm just going to skip that step a little bit here and say, well, we'll delete the 11 out altogether. And now we need to swap the 26 with its least child, 13. 
And one more time, we'll swap the 26 with the 14, and we've settled our 26 back down to the bottom. Now remove the 13. 13 is going to swap with 30. And we'll delete the 13 that we would add there. Uh, so now we can sink down. 30, 14 moves to the minimum position. And then again, we'll sink down. Looks like the 21 we'll swap with. Okay, onto the next delete, we'll delete the 14. Swap it with the 24 here. The 14 gets deleted, and now again, sync down operation. Sync that 24 down with the 15. And one more time. The 24 is settled at the bottom, 17 floating up, and our 15 is ready for removal. So we'll, we'll replace that with our uh, 25. We'll swap it out with our 25. And now we'll sync down our 25. Uh, one more time. Now we can remove our 17. Moving our 17, we are going to swap it out with our 26 here. Um, and again, we should do some sync downs. One more time. Okay, let's continue. Maybe we'll uh, delete the 20 now. Swapping it with the 30. And then we'll do a sync down. Okay, looks like 21 is the next one to remove. So we'll swap the 21 with the 26. And we'll sync the 26 down. And one more time. And we can remove the 24 now. 24 swaps with the 26. And we'll sync the 26 down. Last couple deletes are pretty straightforward. The 25 swaps with the 30, but now we need to sync down, and the last two deletes are very straightforward. We're going to delete the 26 by swapping it with the 30, no syncing down to be done, and now the last delete, we delete the 30. Now what we've got here, you can see these elements are now in order, we've sorted them, uh, and we've done that using what's known as heap sort. Okay, the heap sort algorithm. Uh, the heap sort algorithm uh, basically just does this. It says here we've got a heap. The first thing we do is we just pour the elements into the heap and then we just pull the elements out one at a time. And when we do, when we come out, they'll be in order question then is, what is the runtime of our heap sort algorithm? And this is a, a little bit tricky for us to see. It's maybe a little bit beyond uh, the details I want to go into here. Uh, but we can think of there being two steps here. Putting all the elements in the heap, taking all the elements out of the heap. So putting all of the elements into the heap goes something like this. We're starting out with an empty heap. And the cost to uh, add our n elements into the heap is expressed by a sum that looks something like this. Okay, uh, i equals zero. So we start with an empty list. We have to add in. It takes log of i to add into a heap of that size uh, up to n minus one. That's our last add. And then on the way down. We need to do something kind of similar. Now, I need to be careful here. Uh, my first one is going to be of size 0, or sorry, of size n. And I plug in 1 here, I'm going to get 1. Or so I'm going to get uh, my first input here, i equals 1. I'm going to get the 1 cancelled out with the minus 1, and I'm just going to get n. So the first term in this series is log n. That's the cost of taking out an element of, si of a heap of size n. The next one will be log n minus 1. That's the cost of removing an element after I've removed one already. So now that the size of my heap's gone down to n minus 1. And so on, all the way down to log 1, which will be my last one. Now these two sums are actually very similar to each other. 
They're almost exactly the same sum. One's just written in reverse. Uh, but what we really need to know is, well, what's a good tight bound on this? What's a good big O bound on, the, on these sums? And that's, uh, again, something I might leave. You can review maybe a different video if you want to look at how to handle the sum of this form. Uh, but this uh, sum we can quite easily see is going to be less than or equal to n log n. And that's the good bound that we're looking for here. So our, our heap sort algorithm is another n log n sorting algorithm. And it's, it's fairly simple once you've implemented the heap. You just put all the elements into the heap and then pull them all out in order. Okay, so in this video we uh, practiced our adding and removing elements from a minimum heap. Um, this is going to be good practice, of course, for interview questions or maybe an exam question. Um, so please, uh, if you do want to review them, come back to this video. Or if you want some other practice, uh, just generate your own sequence of random numbers uh, and do as I did, add them all into a heap and then pull them all out of the heap uh, by simulating basically a heap sort algorithm. All right, in the next video, I'm going to take a look at another exercise related uh, to heaps. Um, and uh, so thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.